Life is Strange's fourth episode can best be described as a reverse misery sandwich. It begins with a horrible twist and ends with another one that serves up a gut punch so strong it feels like Mike Tyson has pounded your abdomen with knuckle dusters. But unlike the average sandwich, the filling in between these sequences, in other words the bulk of the episode, is far from the tastiest part of the meal. That accolade goes to the opening and ending sequences. If you've been reading our reviews of the other episodes, you'll know by now that it's incredibly hard to discuss Life is Strange without spoiling the many plot twists and consequences your choices can have on the narrative. Episode 4 is where they all start coming together. Choices you made throughout all three episodes have a distinct effect on how this episode plays out from start to finish, and it's now apparent that the game you're playing will likely be very different from the one someone else is experiencing. Developer Don't Nod Entertainment continues to show Bioware just how a true choice system should be done, and chances are there will be at least one seemingly wise decision that you made in a previous episode, reassured at the time by the knowledge that it was the best or right thing to do, that will leave you with a sinking feeling and a basket full of, oh, what if I'd done that differently? You're going to feel that a few times throughout episode 4. The episode starts with Max facing the consequences of her time-rewinding shenanigans, forcing her to realize that playing with time and rewinding it to try and do the right thing can actually make things much, much worse. After all, how could going back in time and saving somebody you know from dying in a car crash have a bad outcome, right? No devastated wife, no emotionally stunted daughter, no funeral. Everyone's a winner. Well, no, and it's not just the local funeral service that gets shafted. Stopping that death causes a ripple effect that impacts the whole community in ways that are arguably worse than if the person had just died as they were originally supposed to. Sadly, the impact is soon lost as the game decides to play it safe and effectively abort that entire timeline, but what we saw there has a lasting effect on Max. So much so that for most of the episode you're not allowed to use the time rewinding powers you've grown to rely on. Every time I rewind, I feel like it could be my last, Max admits at one point, insisting that she has to solve the mysteries of the present without affecting the past. Instead, much of the episode is spent piecing together the clues you've been gathering throughout the story. At one point, you have everything you found out written up and pinned to a board in front of you, and you are tasked with making connections between the various clues so that you can trace what's been happening and when. It's a fun piece of detective work, and while some of the clues aren't exactly obvious, Max drops enough hints when you make wrong connections that it shouldn't take anyone too long to figure out what goes where. Just don't try playing that section when you're really tired. We are only one chapter away from the story's ultimate conclusion, but after episode 4's ending, we're not sure we want to play it. There are many things we fear in this life. Old age, mental decline, moomins. But if you were to ask us between now and its release what our current biggest fear is, we'd probably reply with Life is Strange, Episode 5.